I say this has turned out pretty good for my first time ever plastic welding. Of course, the proof is going to be in a water test, which is what we need to get to next. We also need to release the mold from the plastic. Some of the plastic, I think, stuck to it. I know it did. Might be that primer that I put on there. Should have left my mask on. All these little particles of plastic. Probably not good for you. Yeah, not bad at all. I think I need to do something to polish that up a little bit. But for what it is, let's see. This doesn't want to release very nicely. There's all this smoke. <laughs> the corners are pinched. I don't want to get too crazy. Well, this mold is tapered, so it should release up, but I think some plastic melted somewhere on it. Testing, testing how tough this thing is. If they break during this, they'll definitely break with all the pressure of the water on it. But I'm unable, there's holes here I can press on. Yeah, see that one? Oh, it just doesn't want to release. We need it to release. Well, clearly I'm gonna to have to work on my molding skills. Look, I have this thing almost broken and apart. I still can't get it out. There's something back here, deep down there that's plastic welded to it. I didn't expect that. I guess I need to use a release agent of some sort. Well, I got it out. But it wasn't without damage being done. Obviously the mold is damaged, certainly repairable. That's not a problem. You tack welds and we're back in business. This is tapered. This piece here caught. That's why it bent, because I finally just had to rip it out. Might have to check that alignment. Probably do some grinding, make sure all the edges are really, really uh, smooth. Back here, didn't, I guess we got some non-smooth edges. It looks like that was the major issue. I never made a mold before. All right, so everyone out there who knows how to make molds leave a comment on what i should have done better i obviously didn't have very smooth corners and some of those corners caught on the plastic it's good news bad news story because good news is we're learning how to do this bad news is that we did damage now i don't have to build another reservoir i will have to start building one one of these weeks we will have to come back to that probably next week or the week after once i get this one all built and tested However, in getting it off of the mold, we did break some of the welds, which again is good news, bad news. The good news is, is they broke now and uh, we can fix them. Clearly they would have been weak spots and the last thing we want is a reservoir that has weak spots when you fill it with water, 63 gallons of water. So let's get it back on the table and we'll have to do some fixes. The really, really good news is this thing is super light. I don't really want to use marker on these things because I do want it to look good, but this edge came off, down here came off, this all has to be done from here to here, but not all of them broke, held up really well because I was really hitting it hard to get it out. All the really long welds, they did very nicely, these corner welds that need to be redone. So we'll get those redone one step closer. All right, well, it's been a few days worth of work now. 
here we are. We've got a base, a reservoir, and a reservoir lid all assembled. I want to take a moment to talk about the red lines that I have. Red lines are the changes in the drawings and the basic design. So far, there's no major changes in the design. It's actually working out okay. So there are some things like adding extra screws and extra brackets to tighten things up. Not too bad. When it comes to manufacturing, this is the very first time I've ever plastic welded and thermal warping is definitely something that you have to be aware of. I'm not sure how to deal with it quite yet, but it's definitely a thing. The tank actually, the reservoir here turned out really nice. For my very first time ever, I'm actually, I'm pretty happy with it. Some minor changes in the drawings just to make it a little bit easier to manufacture, but I can honestly say I don't want to be plastic welding tanks for very long. I think there's about eight towers that I need to build after this one. I believe they will be plastic welded just because we don't have the $16,000 that it takes to get the mold made for it. But hey, if you want to participate in this and you be willing to help us get the mold and the thermal molding done, please shoot me an email at trm at therealmartian.com. But otherwise, you know, it looks like a tank. Man, this thing is so much lighter. I mean, you'd expect it to be a lot lighter than the stainless steel, but it's gonna be so much better for shipping and handling. Really, the only thing that we need to do here where we're at is do a water test, which I was really hoping to be able to give you guys on this video, but we're gonna have to do it in another one. And the reason why isn't because the tank isn't ready, isn't because the base isn't ready, it's because the bulkhead fittings that I needed to be able to fill the holes, I ordered the wrong ones. Ugh. So they should be here in a few days. Hopefully we'll be able to get the water test done because I don't want to put the electronics and wire the base until we know that the reservoir is going to work. It's also worth noting that if you haven't followed along with us, these tanks, the reservoirs, they're bimodal, meaning that they can work for fish or they can work for hydroponics. We made them large enough to where you can get quite a few fish in there. And then we have our circulation pump and our biofilter, which goes on the back here standard aquarium stuff heater goes into it and everything and you'd be off to the races with fish you might want to take the lid off so you can see them but the lid is here for evaporation control so we minimize that i need a cap back here when you're in hydroponic mode but not the point all that said one reservoir can feed up to 15 to 33 towers so it's 63 gallons and if you do all the math which i have for each of the towers what they require per hour per minute one reservoir can feed all of those nutrients to 15 to 33 towers. And the difference, the range there is based on what type of plant species you're growing. So if you're growing ones that require a lot more nutrient density, then you have 15 like flowering, corn, tomatoes, marijuana, all those would be ones that you would have 15 towers on. So that means you need one tower with a reservoir and the rest of them are all going to be connected to buddy breathing, which now is all gonna be managed through bulkheads rather than all the irrigation connectors we were using before. So everything now is gonna be pushed to connect. It's gonna be beautiful. One reservoir can feed up to 15 to 33 towers. So you don't need one reservoir per tower. And what that means is you could actually have like triple or quadruple deck grow decks all running off of buddy breathing is what I call it, the shared system. But overall, really, really happy. I wish I could turn this tower on and it had the LED lights and all that. That's part of what is gonna be coming. This base is actually designed for some aesthetic looks, whereas the previous ones were all purely functional. Now we're actually trying to get aesthetic, you know, pleasing to the eye type of features put in. So you see the color tones here. We have two-tone black and white. Uh, in the base, these sides actually light up with blue and green lighting coming out. And the whole thing's gonna look pretty tight, I think, when it's turned on. I'm excited to get those in there and we'll get that all in on this tower once we do the water test, which I'm a little, little anxious about. The reason I'm a little anxious is flexibility and give in the plastic a little more than I expected. My FEA program license ran out, so I wasn't able to do FEA on this finite element analysis to confirm all my loads, but I believe we're well within the tolerance. So we'll see how that goes. Little, little worried about that. But overall, I'm really happy with how this has come together. There's minor changes so far. I think the biggest problem we've actually had is the mold that you saw in this video, which again, I don't wanna be using these for more than the eight that we're talking about building <clears throat> after this one. So I'm gonna to have to play around with that mold. I think it's just a matter of grinding off the edges and the welds, making them better, a lot smoother, I think is probably my problem there. So we'll get that taken care of. Next, we need to do nine inch extensions, which should be pretty fast. And then we'll be on to our first grow deck which will involve a lot more machining. We've got the CNC table. We got to cut everything just like what we did for the main reservoir here. And then we'll put up the mold for the grow deck and we'll start the plastic welding there. 
and put the frame together and we'll have our first grow deck. There'll be two grow decks on here plus a grow light. So we have two spacer assemblies, two grow decks, and one light. So we got five more assemblies to go and then we'll be set. So hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy seeing this thing come together as much as I am. It's really cool going from idea to real world product and then being only just steps away from really being able to sell these things. This is the one that we intend to be able to sell. I could actually sell the stainless steel ones if you want one, but they're really expensive. <laughs> this is gonna be a lot less expensive, almost over half the cost. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you get notified when I put up new videos. And you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Patreon if you'd like to help out. We'll really appreciate that. Plus there's a ton of behind the scenes footage over at Patreon you can check out. In the meantime, this is Real Martian, out.